Because I think yeah. D'Onofrio has the comics kingpin down. Like, Certainly. he clearly knows his source material. He knows his source material. So he's bringing to life the character the way it was envisioned. He doesn't need to, he does not need to be in the trenches, fisticuffs, every single show. Waste. I don't want to see it. One last point before we move on. He doesn't need to be doing the dirty work. All the That's time. what I'm saying. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we finally got to see the entirety of Echo. And I seem to agree with the majority of people who believe, I have my own, a small take on it, but the majority of people who believe that, uh, and we said it even before even watching the Echo series in its entirety, which was that the editing and the storyline was going to be a bit of a mess. And the editing was surely, if you were paying attention, was a mess. Mm-hmm. And for me, Brian, I think the take is that I think Marvel did what Warner Brothers should have done with Batgirl. Oh, I like this. Well, actually, I'm going to kick it right back to you. Expand, please. I like this. Well, take this out. Yeah. If you look at Echo and 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 the, I mean, you're watching it and you're saying like, I'm paying for this, and the editing was just seemed like it was done like it, it it looked like they gave up on it similar to how warner brothers gave up on batgirl they just wrote it off right but okay so i agree with you there's it's clear to me that this is not a finished project right this project got to a place it was submitted it was chopped up it was like to like your favorite um, your favorite scene in Superman three. They put it through that compactor, <laughs> except it didn't pop out the other side as as full as full Clark Kent. Yeah. But are you are you glad? Do you think we're better off that it exists and is out there in this form versus Batgirl, which will never see the light of day? Absolutely, because we can see that none of what we saw in terms of the negative aspects we have towards it was the performances, the action. This was all just, I'm sorry to say it was editing and, and, and people really giving up on developing and making it a, a really dope series. If you're going to do spotlight, if you're going to do, if this is going to be your debut, a spotlight, come on. Yeah. Well, that, that we talked about and that I agree. And I think this thing, Putting the spotlight on this helped nobody. Didn't help spotlight. It didn't help this show. Interesting take. I agree with you. I'm glad it exists. I'm, I'm glad it exists because I, I kind of went down the Alakwa Cox rabbit hole because I was just curious about her as a human being after seeing this show in a way that her smaller role in Hawkeye kind of just never piqued my interest. <laughs> so on the one hand, I was like, wow, this is an impressive display of of physical acting, kind of facial acting. And then like I started to read her actual bio and I was like, this was a layup for her. She can't hear. She has a prosthetic limb in real life. And then I'm reading like, she playing varsity basketball. She's playing varsity volleyball. And I'm like, so, so this was like cakewalk stuff compared to what I perceived that to be. What an impressive, what an impressive sort of personal resume. Forget the acting chops. So I'm glad this show existed for no other reason than you can marvel at her ability to hold the camera with just her face, with the way she signs um, and the way she moves. You know, when, when, you know, in a couple of these action set pieces, she does some cool stuff. Like there's no question. And I do hope that the character is brought back. Uh, I heard the you, you made the comparison to Batgirl. I heard I heard a, a comparison to Blue Beetle, which I didn't think was awful either. This idea that, you know, Joel and Mara Duane, uh, Alakwa Cox were good enough in their roles to warrant their character continuing somewhere in the universe, even if they were never going to anchor another solo project again. I think that's very fair. I was very, I was very impressed. Like when we get to our star ratings, 75% of my star rating is basically going to be her. Yeah. Um carrying carrying this show when it's when it's working i would have to sort of add to the 
ensemble, Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin is just mesmerizing. I'm sorry, the way they film him, the way he moves and talks, I'm a little bit annoyed at the fact that I don't want to see a kingpin that in each episode, this dude is losing his cool. It's going to get old. If the kingpin is going to be sort of the MCU's next Thanos, think about that. You saw Thanos do his thing in the last two movies. Thanos was around. Kingpin is around. I don't need this dude fighting Kate Bishop in a Hawaiian shirt at night dressed in white. This is not, this is not is an actor. He will bring the performance that is requested of him. And I like the fact that they brought him back to the kingpin that we're seeing now. I, I agree. I think there's two kingpins. Um, there, as you say, there's the thespian kingpin, the sort of mastermind. I mean, quite honestly, like kingpin to me is more, much more Lex Luthor than he is brawler, right? I mean, if we're looking for like the DC versus Marvel comparison, this is a guy who is a step ahead mentally. This is a guy who is pulling the strings, but not always visible. He is fearsome physically on occasion when necessary, which can be very cool. But he he can't exist in these series and shows as a we're going to build up to a Mortal Kombat Street Fighter physical confrontation with Kingpin every time. Yeah. I, that, that will cheapen. And I, I texted you. I said, is he becoming the Brooklyn Brawler of the MCU? <laughs> and I was like, so he's basically taking an L to Kate Bishop and he's taking an L to Echo. And like, we're not even really to the starting line of what he's supposed to be in the MCU. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want that. Like, I'd much rather some of his henchmen get dispatched. And he's kind of like Thrawn in the background being like, do yeah, this, but that. I'm already on to playing this bigger game so I can sacrifice my pawn in the process. Like, I'd much rather that. I don't, in some ways, the Daredevil show on Netflix, part of what made his murder of of Ben, the reporter, so dramatic was they saved it, right? He basically didn't do, he was just, he, he unleashes this one little burst of physicality to commit a murder and then kind of immediately is very kind of suave and deadpan and back to his usual. So I, that that's what keeps me interested because I think yeah. D'Onofrio has the comics kingpin down. Like Certainly. he clearly knows his source material. He knows his source material. So he's bringing to life the character the way it was envisioned. He doesn't need to. He does not need to be in the trenches, fisticuffs, every single show. Waste. I don't want to see it. One last point before we move on. He doesn't need to be doing the dirty work. All the That's time. what I'm saying. He's too on site. At the end of this show, for him to show up at the finale and kind of be like doing what his henchmen should have been doing is sort of a, t a storytelling mistake. And like I was already bracing for what it then became what I thought to be a again a pretty weak end to this series where they relied on sort of this almost Native American superpower. I we'll get into it. I, I just think that the finale the finale exchange did not help Echo and it did not help Kingpin, and I was very unhappy with how they left this. One one other last point, Brian. I think the way they should have been doing this with Kingpin, especially. Kingpin has assassins, yo. He has people that he calls upon to do his dirty work. That is how you introduce a character. Yes. And we don't even have to see him that much. We can see the, the, I guess the, the MO. Well, that's why I thought that the Netflix spin on Bullseye, not that it was perfect, but the concept of like Fisk, recruiting this government agent, manipulating, developing him. But then when the agent cross, when the guy crosses him, he breaks his back, spoiler alert, right? Like yeah, yeah. that's villainous stuff, you yeah, know? And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, I just was watching that finale scene in Echo being like, why is he even in the town? Like, or if he is in the town, why is he face to face with her? Like, I get they're trying to say that they had a personal relationship and he's almost like a surrogate father to her, but like, even so, he doesn't need to be standing right in front of her in that moment. Let's talk about some of the, uh, 
other good things, Brian? There were, were, were there some other things that you or scenes that you enjoyed that you were like, oh snap, that's dope. Well, I honestly the the supporting cast, the supporting Native American cast. I mean, I think again, it, as this show was chopped up in the editing room, it's like you're kind of wasting Graham Greene, who's sort of a, a legend. Um, I even thought Bonnie, her friend, I didn't really, that was a relationship that just never went anywhere, but you could tell was supposed to be this like linchpin relationship. And I was what's interested the name of the other dude? to see, what's that? What was the other name of that dude? The, 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 the vet, the veteran, the veteran actor. Oh, Graham Greene. He's been in everything. I mean, if you, trust me, you've seen Graham Greene. <laughs> yo, wait, yo, he's the type of dude that you could either love him or hate him as a as his character demands it to be in terms of if he wants to be hated as a character, he can you can really dislike him as a character. Yeah. And in this one, he was more endearing, still a little bit tough, but you I liked him. And yes. yeah, man, I liked his performance. And 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 it's like you feel like damn, they gave up on this show. This Yeah, this show that's what I'm saying. Like these dope. were like these were like talented performers and it's just like whatever lines they were scripted never made it you know never made it into what we saw and so you kind of had these half-baked relationships um that didn't that didn't really didn't really go anywhere i mean i think the set pieces weren't perfect they had some highs we talked about the the single cam fight there's some moments in that like there's some choices that are it's not as good as daredevil but there's some moments that are interesting the train I thought that was a weird choice to have a train heist in this show. It felt very Mission Impossible, like for no other reason than to show off that, that she was, was a badass. And you can tell that it was... A little was, shaky, right? Like the... Yeah. The visual effects was whack, yo. I, I knew where we were in a studio. That's a problem. Yeah. yeah. But then and it was then like, the, okay, and, then and we're that back reveal. to... Yeah. But then we're like back to fighting in the roller ring. It just... There's some moments where I'm like, okay, when, when they let Alakwa Cox be physically impressive and kind of, you know, look, I mean, the point of this character is that it's, that she's been through a lot and she's overcome a lot and she's able to kind of win fights on determination and sort of will. And, you know, obviously they don't, they don't stick to the comics lore of she's basically like Taskmaster, right? She's supposed to be able to echo fighting styles, but I understand why they didn't want to do that again after Black Widow wasted Taskmaster already. Um, but but Brian, before, keep hold that thought. They attempted. They gave us some hints when in the initial uh, Hawkeye when she was a kid, when she was watching a kid doing some moves, and she was able to replicate it. I would have loved to see that be done. The way Taskmaster that was dope. But to have another character that can do that in this world is still dope. And instead, they chose to. I don't know. Every like again, everybody got a gimmick. Yep, but that's Out what of I mean. Nowhere, and I think the creator basically said that. I mean, basically, what I got from some of the statements I've seen is, yeah, basically they felt like Taskmaster had taken this lane, and then they felt like they wanted to, you know, leverage the sort of Native American sort of historical storytelling they were using. But I, I think in doing so, it really lost the DNA of what makes this character interesting. Yeah, which yeah. is that you know it is it is about that toughness that like she's at these seeming disadvantages and she converts them to advantages, right? And it's like there's an opportunity there for some great fight choreography and 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 yeah, it just it just didn't happen. So they gave up on it. It's but epic. who knows that they shot? But who knows? What, like we don't know what they shot. Like all of what was shot. And I have to say, like the way again. True. I knew we were getting bait and switched with the promo, but they were promoting this as almost like a nonstop John Wick style fighting show. And there's actually relatively little fighting. Mm-hmm. Oh, my last thing I got, I have to say this and I'm going to say it with some sensitivity, but they, Disney got a lot of support from the Choctaw nation in Oklahoma to do this show, which is why you get a lot of scenes gotcha. with ancient flashback. So shouts and respect to putting that on screen but I do think it veered into, hey, I'm in a classroom, not in a theater sometimes. And you got to be, I think you do have to balance. Like I think about the success of Black Panther where you kind of got, you got some cultural education, or at least I felt like I did as someone who probably was uneducated going in yeah. without it feeling like someone was at the blackboard handing me a textbook. 
it was done in the context of this kind of well-told story around um, the history of Wakanda and then sort of like tying that into sort of, you know, the, the contrast in Oakland. This felt much more like almost segregated. It was like, okay, here is your history lesson and here is your show. And I think, again, in terms of editing and pacing, it, it just didn't really work for me. Like it was just like it, it was too too much or too disparate and not integrated enough in, mm-hmm. in the in the main theme for me to kind of stay with it and feel like it was successful. So again, I, I feel like I com- I commend the motivation, but I didn't love the execution. Uh, do we uh, out of five? So I've been between two. I be, I'm going to give it a two. Um, I was leaning one and a half or two. And I'm like, I just, I'm going to give a Lockwood Cox one and a half on her own. And I'm going to give Vincent D'Onofrio, Graham Greene, and kind of the family, the other half. And then if I was, part of me was going to take it back to one and a half because I wanted to give demerits to the studio for doing what they did to this show. But I'll stick with it too. Like I said, it's definitely not the worst show Marvel has put out there. Um, But I, it does, it does leave a lot to be desired. And it's kind of a shame that some of the performances here got lost in whatever happened behind the scenes. Yeah, that, and that's that's where I have to sort of deduct the points in that this show could have easily been a three and a half, three show, right? I think so. If, if, if the studio, I guess, even cared about this character as much as we thought they did. Um, and, and they made an attempt, but they didn't really finish, Brian. No, I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. It, it is definitely like, unlike Secret Invasion, which I felt like there was no redemption for, this one felt like there was a world where this show would have been, at least in the WandaVision category, maybe not the Loki category, but like at least in the WandaVision category. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, let us know what you guys think of the Echo series. Um, what were your thoughts? Do you agree that the studio gave up on Echo? Uh, could this have been a dope show? Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Uh, hit that like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. The show goes on! Yeah!